Okay, hello and welcome back to the Radiologic Technologist uh, YouTube channel. I'm doing another video answering a, uh, an email question and today's uh, response is going to be in regards to the uh, x-ray programs in the Phoenix metropolitan area. So if you're in the Phoenix area or you're considering moving to the Phoenix area, um, there are several schools that are still to choose from. That is where I went to x-ray school. I, uh, in 2003, in fact, I'm, I'm wearing the class shirt here. Uh, in 2003, I signed up for x-ray school at Pima Medical Institute. Uh, that's actually the original campus on Mesa Drive behind me. When I decided to go into x-ray school, I looked around and saw that Gateway Community College had a program, and that's the local community college. And there was Pima Medical Institute, which was private. And the biggest difference there, the two biggest differences there are price and uh, waiting list. Um, now, I, I'm going to say, you know, call and see what the current conditions are, because this was 2003. But there was also uh, Central Arizona College, or CAC. Uh, I believe that was in Apache Junction. There was the Bryman School, which I believe became Carrington. Um, there was a Sanford Brown, I believe. Um, what else? There was several. There was like seven or eight schools, which was bad news for technologists. It oversaturated the market and made it difficult to find a job. Not impossible, but, but difficult. And some of the schools did end up closing. Um, but this is, a, this is a review of uh, Pima Medical Institute and Gateway. Now, let me be clear where I went and for what. I went to Pima Medical Institute actually as far back as 1993 for phlebotomy. Um, it was like a three-month program. It was very affordable. I came out of that making $12 or $14 an hour, something like that. Uh, and that was uh, kind of what I did on the side when I started my pool business. And so I was already familiar with Pima Medical Institute for phlebotomy. It was a great program, taught me everything I needed. Uh, was able to get a job right away in phlebotomy uh, at one of the uh, local systems there. At, at the time, it was called uh, the Samaritan system. Um, and then when it came time to move up the ladder, so to speak, uh, I, I looked around again and was trying to decide, do I stay in healthcare? Uh, there was a uh, technical institute uh, in the West Valley that um, taught how to repair motorcycles and I believe cars. And it was a two year program. It was about the same amount of money as Pima if I remember right. And they both came out making around $18 an hour, something like that. So I had to make a decision. So I, I chose healthcare. I stayed with healthcare. I've got family in healthcare. Uh, so the application process at Pima, and, and again, check for, for current conditions, but the application process at the time was a point system. And you got points for different things. You got points if you had college classes uh, that applied, you know, that were pertinent to the role. You got points if you had applied before and not uh, gotten through. Yeah, you got points if you were a veteran. You got points if you were older than a certain age. Um, and it consisted of an interview and the Wonderlick test. And I, I talk about all this on my, if you go to my website, the radiologictechnologist.com, I have several articles. I've got about 51 articles written about a ton of different things, but one of them is how to get into an x-ray school, and it, and it lists all this stuff. But the, uh, the Wonderlick test is kind of a basic test that uh, you'll see the NFL players take. Um, it's, it's just kind of a general, general test. So you had the Wonderlick, you had the interview. Um, I can't remember anything else other than that. The comparison between... Pima and Gateway is that Gateway is much, much cheaper. Gateway is a public school. At the time, it was around six or $7,000. I don't think it's a lot more than that now, uh, but there was a three-year waiting list at the time, um, which, you know, makes sense. It's the more affordable option. Um, so they also required prerequisites at uh, Gateway, um, and they, they built in the prerequisites, so to speak, into the Pima program. So if I was to go to Gateway and save some money, I would have had to take some prerequisites uh, and then wait, you know, three years. Of course, during that three years, you could take the prerequisites, but I didn't have that many prerequisites. 
I don't know if I had any since I had my bachelor's, but the three year waiting list, since I was going in in my mid twenties, I did not want to wait. And uh, Pima Medical Institute, I got in right away. And that one was $18,000 at the time. So, you know, compare that to $6,000, it's triple, right? Um, but do the math on getting out in the field and taking, you know, doubling your income uh, within two years when you graduate. You make more in the span that you would have waited to get into the public school than you would have saved if you'd gone to the public school. Uh, and I had a family started at the time. I'm still fighting a cold, so <coughs> you have to bear with me on that. Um, so Pima was 18,000, two-year program, got in right away, and a uh, pretty straightforward program. You had, I believe it was classes, four days a week, the first semester. Actually, I think the first semester was all classes, because I can't put you out there in the clinical so you know something. So I think the first semester was all classes. Uh, and then after that, you either had four days a week of class and a day of clinical, or four days a week of clinical and a day of class. I, I can't remember, because you, you, you have to keep learning the didactic, the classroom stuff all along. But after the first semester or so, they really start going hardcore on the clinical hours, because you have to get a ton of hours. In fact, this is the shirt we made in my class. It says, um, singing, dancing, novelty, figure $9, 784 hours of class time, 2,048 hours of extern, and the process of obtaining an RT license, $20,000. And then the back, if I can show it, the back is basically the x-ray of a Krusty the Clown doll. And it says, the price of being able to figure out what's wrong with your novelty doll is priceless. So it's, it's a play off that old MasterCard commercial, but, um, but it just verifies, you know, we, we, we had to do a ton of hours, 2,048 clinical hours, 784 in the classroom, and, um, and it was tough, uh, you know, but so are a lot of other programs. Um, so I went through the program. The nice thing about Pima, in my opinion, um, several nice things about Pima. One is they had a system, and again, you know, check current status but they had a system where you could kind of choose your own clinical site. A lot of places uh, like here locally, they rotate you around everything and you don't get a say for the most part. Um, but when I went to Pima, they, they kind of had a lottery. They, I think they put everybody's name in a hat and, and you had down where you wanted to go, you know, on your piece of paper kind of pre-planned. And they pulled names out of the hat and, and whoever got pulled, you got to go up and say what you wanted and they wrote it on the board. So if you were drawn last, you got stuck with whatever was last. But if you were strategic about it, like I was, I chose something not everybody wanted. I chose a smaller hospital that uh, allowed weekend rotations. So I was able to work Monday through Friday and then do clinical rotations uh, the latter half of Friday and all Saturday, Sunday. And uh, that turned into the first of many blessings for me because the x-ray tech on the weekends had to cover CT as well. So he taught me CT. Uh, shout out to Captain James Shepard if you're out there. Um, he taught me CT at the same time as x-ray. So when I graduated x-ray school, I got hired as a CT tech at CT Tech Wages. Um, but uh, you can choose your uh, clinical rotation location if they're still doing it that way. And you can kind of game the system a little bit, if you will, to what you need. If you, if you need to work while you're going, you can kind of work that around your work schedule. Or if you're, you know, interested in working in a certain place, pick that for your clinical site. Because uh, most places will hire you if you do a good job on your clinical rotation. Why, why wouldn't they? They just spent 2,000 hours training you. So um, that's one of the things I liked about Pima. They, they had a ton of affiliations uh, around the entire state, actually. There was a couple locations that were a couple hours away. I think they had a clinical rotation out of Kingman and some places far away like that. Uh, but there was also housing set up, uh, from what I remember. And um, some guys were happy to take that. They were single. They took off, went out there for a semester or whatever. Uh, maybe drove back and forth for class a little bit. But um, Pima also has an online bachelor's program. So when you graduate with your associates from X-Ray, you can go right into the online bachelor's program. Uh, so that's another uh, nice advantage. 
Gateway has an excellent x-ray program. I knew John that ran the program. He ran it for over 20 years, I believe. John ran an excellent program. He uh, was very thorough. He was an expert in his field for sure. Um, if you can get in over at, at Gateway into the x-ray program, I, I don't know if John's still there actually, but if you can get in over at the Gateway program, uh, you will not be underserved. It, it will teach you what you need to know to pass your boards and be an excellent radiographer. Now, as far as the other schools in the Phoenix market, I had uh, people on my clinical rotations from Carrington, and it might be a different name now, uh, but they, they did just fine. They uh, kept up with us and, and I didn't see any lack in skills from the Carrington folks. Um, never worked with any of the Central Arizona College. From what I remember, they, if they're even still open, they, they only took like eight students. Uh, it was a very small program. So I think that's about it. So that's a quick summary for me anyway, uh, on the x-ray schools in the Phoenix metropolitan area, both uh, Pima Medical Institute and Gateway Community College are excellent options. They both also have alternative modalities um, Gateway has a nuclear medicine school and an ultrasound program. I did attend Gateway for the ultrasound program. It was an excellent program. It was led by the director, Brian Dodd. Shout out to Brian. He's still running the program. Great guy, great program. Um, and I can't remember who's running the nuclear medicine program now, but uh, all three of them are, are excellent programs. Gateway is an excellent school. And uh, so I would recommend both. It depends on um, your money situation, your, your time, is there still a wait? Uh, how soon do you need to get in? Uh, definitely worth checking out both of them. So I hope this has been helpful. If you're looking for a school in that area or if you're evaluating Pima or Gateway, they're both excellent schools. If you have any other questions about radiography or, or any modality really, just leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I do have a uh, interesting podcast if you're interested on my website I have interviewed a mobile radiographer who uh, has the job of x-raying the celebrities in Hollywood and so I interviewed her for a good hour she talked about all the crazy antics that she sees over there and uh, that was a really interesting episode I also interviewed one of the physicists for the AAPM who was instrumental or a big player in uh, the idea that we no longer need to shield our patients. And so I've got an hour long interview with her on the, on the podcast page as well, explaining all the, the pros and cons and the whys and why nots if you're interested in that. And uh, I hope you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can see when new videos are posted. And uh, thanks for stopping by.